Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel in another fishing video. So today it's going to be some day ticket fishing on the banks of the River Severn at Coalport. Behind me here, the Brewery Inn, I'm going to be fishing their stretch. I'll give you a look over some of the pegs. I'll show you how to get your day ticket paid up in advance. We'll get some lines in the water. The Severn's been pushing through over the last few days because we've had quite a lot of rain. So hopefully one or two bobble for the video. So first thing, most importantly, Let's get our day ticket sorted out. So, brewery in. Just careful down the side of the road here. Outside the front door, we've got a notice board. So, five pound prepaid for your day ticket, or oh, it's 10 quid on the bank. A few photos, got a map of the stretch at the bottom there. Inside that box there, grab an envelope, pop your name, vehicle reg on it, stick your fiver in there. Straight through the front door, and you're all paid up and good to go. So I've paid for my day ticket now. In terms of the stretch, the majority of the pegs are in the downstream direction down that lane there. But there are a small number of pegs upstream as well in that direction. So to access all of the stretch, it's down this track here. It's where the parking is. Let's get a trip down there. I'll show you a few pegs. We'll get one picked. Get some wines in the water and see how we get along. So parking, it's just past these residential houses here. Anyone on the right hand side under the trees. There's a couple of pulling areas. To access the pegs that are upstream of the pub, this walkway here takes you down into a mown grass area. Let's have a little walk down here quick. So there's a river in the bottom, absolutely pushing through here. Looks great. So we've got mown grass all the way down here. I'm fairly sure this is the brewery that's managing this. There's pegs in that direction, upstream of the pub. I'm going to head downstream to start with towards Coalport Bridge, show you a few pegs in this direction, and then we'll head off back upstream. So in the downstream direction, there's a decent footpath to follow. There are a couple of pegs with steps down. As you make your way down the path, I just want to show you the view off the uh, bridge to start with, because that's the easiest way to uh, get a bearing on the stretch. Be careful if you want to drive over the bridge, it's restricted height, particularly if you've got a van. So this is Coalport Bridge. Lovely old structure. Let's get ourselves out on the bridge. Yeah, that guy there's decided he's not gonna get under, so definitely be careful. Okay, so you've got the wood bridge in on the far bank. This is the downstream section. Looks quite wooded, but there are pegs that you can fish in amongst there. We'll have a walk down there in a second to show you that. Seven's looking absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful scene. And then on the upstream side, Coalport Bridge, 1818, definitely older than me. So again, it looks rather similar, loads of trees and you can't actually see any pegs, but there are pegs underneath those trees in gaps. So the brewery inn, where the power lines are going across the river there, that's roughly where the brewery inn is. You have got to be able to uh, carry your gear a little bit on this stretch. So uh, it's definitely not a uh, part beyond the peg and fish straight at the back of the vehicle jobby. There we go. So first peg here. Nice fast section of water there. Let's keep going down the stretch though. So a bit further down the stretch now, 
really nice peg here. I'll show you this one. Beach type peg, steps down to the water's edge. Nice and slippy at the minute, so uh, again, just be careful. But you can get right down to the water's edge. Lots of water to go at. I've got to be careful with the overhanging trees, but they're easy to navigate. But look at that, great looking peg. River's pushing through nicely. Beautiful. So let's check out the pegs on the upstream side of the pub now. Off the area where you park your vehicle, this path opens up into this nicely mown grassy area. I think the pub are maintaining this and uh, doing a nice job. There's a seven down there, looking gorgeous. If you follow this along under these trees, there's further pegs down here. So the pub's coming up on the right hand side to the back of the pub here. So you're upstream of the Colport Bridge. Let's just come around the side of those wires. So there's the pub up there, just to give you a bearing. So as you can see, nicely prepared area. Dogs are awake in the pub up there. Nice place for an afternoon drink. So I think there's two or three pegs down here. But it's very well kept, easy to access. Real nice place to uh, come and spend some time on the bank. Right, let's check out see if this peg's free down here. Nice open area here. Real nice lick on the river. Good bit of pace. Gonna start a session in here today. So plenty of room to work with. Let's go get the gear, get set up. Let's get some lines in the water. So that's both rods out now then. With this bit of extra flow on today, the tips are gonna be uh, twitching and bouncing a little bit, but that won't be any problem. Great conditions. So when I fish the Shrewsbury Telford Cressage areas, I keep an eye on the uh, Welsh Bridge gauge at Shrewsbury. It's normally about 0.5 in the summer. It's been up to just over a metre over the last few days. Started dropping again now though, so we're down to about 0.7, something like that. So we've probably got about 20, 25 centimetres of extra water on at the minute. Or about a foot, something like that. Great colour in the river. Hopefully just what we need for a few bites. So we're going to target the first third of the river today. It's a pretty consistent pace from this near side margin to about three quarters of the way over where there is some slack water on the far margin, but some nice oxygenated water moving through this section here. So the downstream rod I've just positioned around there, upstream rod, just with a bit of separation that's gone into this area here. We'll see how we get along. Easily holding bottom with a three ounce lead, even though there's this little bit of extra water on. It's not exactly charging through with a meter on or anything crazy like that. So let's see how we get along over the first part of the session in those areas. Well, first bite on the downstream rod. This is on the CKO boily. Couple of taps, nothing too savage, but just enough to strike into. And we're definitely connected straight into the side. It's almost certainly a chub. 
but great to get off the mark. Ooh, it is waking up a bit. Well, 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 I say it's a chub. It's actually a very small barbel. Wow, that's probably the smallest barbel I've had so far this season. A little splasher. Let's get the net out of the brambles. It is a bit of a drop to the side of the river here. That's it, get in the net, mate. Brilliant, first one. Well, first fishing session, and I thought it was a chub, but it's actually yeah, a barbel. Literally only a little splasher. Probably smallest one of the season so far. There we go. Gorgeous little dude from the River Seven. Next generation of fish. Definitely don't want to keep him out for too long. So uh, yeah, let's get him straight back. Get the rod back out. See if we can pick up a bigger one. Well, it's always nice to get off the mark, even though that barbel was in miniature form. I've got the rod back out on the spot again now. So both rods back out and fishing. Bike come on the downstream on the CKO boilie. I'm not actually sure how it got the uh, the boilie in its mouth, to be honest. Its, its mouth was pretty much the same size as the, as the boilie, but it definitely wanted it. So, uh, you know, fair, fair play to the little character. But downstream rods, slightly faster moving water. So there might be a lesson for us in that. The, the, the upstream's not done anything yet. The upstream's on the pellet. We'll give it another half an hour to an hour, but if the upstream rod is quiet, it might be we need to get both rods into, into some faster moving water. Let's see how we get on though, and adjust if we need to make the change. Well, there's been plenty of rain that's come down over the last couple of weeks and it's uh, given the seven the, the first proper flush through of the, the season. I think at maximum we've probably had about three quarters of a metre on, something like that. So it's not been a huge amount of water, but definitely enough to, you know, give it a good wash through. There's bits of debris coming down, so got to be careful with those today. Um, certainly some weed flowing down. I've had to do a couple of rechucks already where the lines have got weeded up. I'm not fishing any ground bait today because I think it's just going to get washed straight downstream. So both rods, both on leads, nice smelly, high attract baits, you know, perfect for when there's a bit of colour in the water. But great to have these conditions in the summer and hopefully it will do us for a good session. Well, rather annoyingly, the upstream rod has just been wiped out. So took my eyes off the rods for a split second and just out the corner of my eye, caught the pod doing this. Thought it was a bite, but unfortunately not. Upstream rods had a branch that's gone straight into it. It's pulled the hook link up tight. I've picked the rod up to stop the pod tipping over. And yeah, tension very, very quickly. The weight of the, well, it's probably bordering on a, a branch rather than uh, anything sort of less substantial, but it's quickly snapped the line. So it was obviously a, you know, very big weight. Keep the rod down so there's no pressure on the tip and uh, let the line take the pressure. Hook links snapped off. So I've got most of my, uh, my tackle back, but just need to uh, set up a new hook link now. So eight pound fluorocarbon, size eight wide gape hook. I'm going to get that tied up right now get that rod back in well both rods back out again now tackled up the other rod again after losing uh, my setup there and it's literally been out about 30 seconds another great big branch has come straight down i've uh, quickly seen it coming and retrieved it to uh, avoid it going through the line but uh, yeah got the rod back out again now and just brought it a little bit shorter so it's it's not far from under the rod tips now let's see how we get along there but uh, it's going to be one of those days where we need to balance off the risk of losing tackle versus where we need to be in the river to pick up bites. Yeah, fish on. Upstream rod is away. Let's just get the rod underneath the other.
lovely little seven chub probably a couple of pounds something like that gorgeous colors that'll do very nicely indeed well a nice flurry of action on the uh, upstream rod i showed you that two pound chub that i put on the mat um so i've got the rod back out and since then i've had a couple more one slightly small work probably about a pound just over and then another similar fish around the uh, the two pound mark so definitely a shoulder chub that have moved into the area that are picking those pellets up so uh, that tactic's working nicely you know just on the uh, near side margin the downstream rod hasn't done anything for uh, a good half an hour 40 minutes now so i'm going to just move that a little bit further downstream there's a bit of room here to to walk that rod down the bank so just going to move that and see if there's any barbel sat a little bit further downstream so downstream rod then so good thing about this peg a little bit of room here so i've just walked it down the bank and i've got it in this spot here so got loads of area to work with here rods are there let's see what we've got that's in this area of the margin hopefully one or two barbel just shelter in there's not that much flow down here let's see if that'll do us a bite over the next hour or so Sun's out now and uh, belting down on the seven. Gorgeous day. Conditions are a lot brighter now though, and uh, that's kind of coincided with the chub bites on the uh, right hand rod drying up. I think that's probably due to the light levels. I've got about 45 minutes left on the session, so we'll stick it out for a bit longer yet. The last couple of sessions of uh, I've been time limited sort of four or five hours um, definitely need to uh, make sure the next one is a full day or a good evening anyway sort of three o'clock onwards through to dusk time it's just the way it's fallen with a few commitments recently where I've only had uh, limited time windows but it's still been an enjoyable session on the bank hopefully there's time for one more yet well, brewery in section then uh, for five quid day ticket. Can't really go wrong to be honest at that price. You can see how bright it is in the background there now. So uh, yeah, it's, it's very different to uh, what it was at the start of session. But if you are looking for a, a day ticket stretch, this is one I definitely recommend. So in this area, uh, Ironbridge, Buildwas, Shrewsbury area, you've got here, uh, you've got uh, Telford Anglin Association uh, down at Buildwas on the old power station site you can do a day ticket there i think that's a tenner um, and then down at shrewsbury you've got uh, shrewsbury town fishery sections uh you've got monkmore sydney avenue that a lot of people know about so there is some good choice for day tickets around here but uh, the brewery in section at coalport generally doesn't get that much uh, press to be honest so um they have got their own uh, dedicated facebook page so it's worth uh, giving that a like to see uh, some of the captures that are coming out uh, it's a really nice section. I'll be back here later in the uh, in the season just to try it out. I'll probably pick a time when the uh, the levels are a little bit different, um, just uh, to change it up and uh, just to fish it in the, under different conditions. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video and uh, a look at this section. Um, not the most prolific in terms of uh, fish caught. Plenty of chub, but uh, just that one barbel. So um, yeah. Still been enjoyable though. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, good luck with your own fishing and I'll catch you on the next one again soon.